We turn to politics and religion, and an issue that has been very visible in this campaign. There's a little-known organization in Washington with a worldwide reach and enormous and sometimes surprising political connections. Our report on this tonight from NBC's Andrea Mitchell. The President of the United States and the First Lady. The National Prayer Breakfast, Bill and Hillary Clinton attending in 1997 a Washington institution for Republican and Democratic presidents since Eisenhower. President Nixon was up early this morning to attend a national prayer breakfast. My special thanks to Bob Stump and Doug Coe. The one constant presence, Douglas Coe. Doug Coe and all of his associates, I'm grateful to them. Now 79, not an ordained minister, and the most important religious leader you've never seen or heard, but well known to scores of senators in both parties and many faiths, like Sam Brownback, Mike Enzi, Mark Pryor, and Bill Nelson, who go to small weekly Senate prayer groups, co-attends, and participants say so have John McCain, Barack Obama, and Hillary Clinton, surprising some who have investigated Coe's group, The Fellowship. I think in part through her involvement with the Fellowship's prayer group, she was able to meet a lot of these conservative Republican senators, get to know them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. In her autobiography, Clinton describes Coe as a genuinely loving spiritual mentor and guide to many, who became a source of strength and friendship during her White House years. Starting with a prayer lunch at Coe's Virginia retreat in 1993, he came to her West Wing office and introduced her to business leaders outside the White House. Who is Doug Coe? Here he is on videotapes obtained exclusively by NBC News with his account of atrocities under Chairman Mao. I've seen pictures of the young men in the Red Guard. They would bring in this young man's mother. He would take an axe and cut her head off. They have to put the purposes of the Red Guard ahead of their father, mother, brother, sister, and their own life. That was a covenant, a pledge. That's what Jesus said. In his preaching, he repeatedly urges a personal commitment to Jesus' commitment compares to the blind devotion Hitler demanded, a rhetorical technique that draws sharp criticism. Hitler, Goebbels, and Himmler were three men. Think of the immense power these three men had, these nobodies from nowhere. <clears throat> Jeff Charlotte lived among Coe's followers six years ago and came out troubled by their secrecy and rhetoric. We were being taught the leadership lessons of Hitler, Lenin, and Mao. And I'd say, aren't, aren't, isn't there a problem with that? And they would even seem perplexed by the question. Um, Hitler's genocide wasn't really an issue for them. It was the strength that he emulated. Now Charlotte's written about it in a soon-to-be-published book. They're notoriously secretive. In fact, they jokingly call themselves the Christian Mafia. It stand and preach to thousands. So how do Coe's admirers explain his say, unusual sermon? What Doug is saying is it's a metaphor. Right? He's using Hitler as a metaphor. You know, Jesus used that for commitment. Asked about Coe's influence on Hillary Clinton, people close to her said she does not consider him one of her leading spiritual advisors, has never contributed to his group, is not a member, and has never heard the sermons that we have cited. And they said he is not her minister. Coe declined an interview, but a close friend said he invokes Hitler to show the power of small groups for good and bad, and most of the time talks about Jesus. Supporters also point to his good works around the world. Still, said, critics question his influence his and mouth. secrecy in a year when the candidates' religious beliefs are part of the political debate. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News, Washington.